I'm Dr. Ray Heilman. I'm a nephrologist here at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona, and I'm the chair of the Division of Nephrology here. We looked uh, back on our experience over the last 10 years with transplanting kidneys from deceased donors only, and we selected out the deceased donors that had what's called acute kidney injury. Uh, and that is that their kidney function was uh, uh, significantly diminished, and many of these patients were classified as severe acute kidney injury, 70% of them. Many of them, uh, the donor's kidney function was so uh, adversely um, diminished that they required temporary dialysis before the donation operation occurred. So these are all deceased donors mm -hmm. over the last 10 year period. And uh, during that 10 year period, there were 161 donors that met our criteria. Uh, and that was the focus of the, the, the Focus of the study. Well, you know, there's in the past, uh, transplant programs have been hesitant or reluctant sometimes to transplant uh, kidneys from the uh, deceased donors that had severe acute kidney injury because of the concern that maybe they aren't going to function well and that the long term survival of that kidney transplant would not be as good. Uh, we know from, uh, you know, a non transplant setting that people can get acutely ill and have acute kidney injury and it usually gets better. So the kidney has a remarkable ability to regenerate the uh, parts of the kidney that are not working and to function uh, well afterwards. So with that information, we have felt that it was reasonable to consider using these organs because the kidney, again, has a remarkable ability to regenerate the functioning, the functioning units. So the, the, the process that we've used for accepting these organs has evolved over time. At the beginning, 10 years ago, uh, when we first started uh, selecting these organs, we were very selective um, and there were many criteria that we used. But over time, we've learned from experience uh, that many of those uh, criteria are not necessary. And our criteria in the last uh, two years has been that we um, that the, the biopsy of the kidney, so we do a biopsy of the kidney uh, before we do the transplant, and that's uh, examined by a nephropathologist, by an experienced pathologist, along with the surgeon and one of the nephrologists. And we make sure that it doesn't show a lot of chronic changes or scarring, um, and that it looks viable. Um, there's a condition called cortical necrosis, which would be an irreversible lesion, and if that's present, we discard those kidneys. Fortunately, that's not very common. Um, we also have, uh, many of these kidneys have used what's called pulsatile pumping. And that's a device that uh, the organ is stored on for a number of hours, and it has a, a, a mechanical pump that pumps pr preservation fluid through the organ. And there are certain characteristics of that uh, you know, physical characteristics of the pumping that will tell, have, have indicated to us that the, organs, the organ uh, has good viability. Uh, so those are the main criteria we use. Now. Well, you know, there's m uh, many different processes that result in, in brain death uh, to, before a person becomes a donor. And, and there are many sad stories that we hear. But fortunately, um, society and, and people and families who are in this tragic setting will frequently make the, 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 the generous decision to allow the brain dead donor to be a donor. And that results in, in the gift of life to many different people. Uh, and it's not just kidneys, it's several organs, liver, pancreas, and so on. Um, but this particular study was emphasizing just uh, all of the recipients that receive kidneys these uh, acute kidney injury uh, donor kidneys were informed uh, of the process and were given, and they gave consent to proceed with transplant. And people who have been waiting for a kidney transplant, they uh, are very motivated to get a transplant. And we're, we try to be very transparent about this, that in the, particularly in the beginning, we, we weren't sure what the outcomes would be. Um, but I think in the last few years, we've become more confident and we can give people more reassurance that these organs are uh, an excellent opportunity for transplant. They are life-saving, and we have felt in 
uh, with our data and our evidence that you're, we're, we are um, not shortchanging a recipient by, by offering them uh, these organs for kidney transplant.